Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Naquan Jordan, the AI protagonist, and today we are going to be creating comic books using Comic AI. So Comic AI allows you to create uh, not only the images for the comics, but create the panels, the characters, consistent characters, and all kinds of different things like that. Here is one that I created um, just to kind of test it out, but instead we're going to start from scratch. So you click on start creating. By the way, this is a free software. Uh, you can, you get like, I think it was 1200 credits when you create a new account and then you get 99 credits every day. So there's two different ways you can start your story. Uh, you can actually skip this completely, but you can type slash paste your story in, or you can use the AI generation to create a story for you. And that's what we're gonna do for this tutorial. So I'm going to quickly type something up. All right, so I type in a fantasy story about a group of adventurers exploring a dangerous cave. Very, very vague story, but we'll see what it generates. And they have this cute little animation of someone uh, doing some drawing. You'll see this for all the loading. And then when it's done, it just pops everything up just like that. Now, unfortunately, it does say that you have to keep your content within a thousand words. So a lot of this I will have to actually um, get rid of, or I could just, you know, put it in like a notepad or something, create the first part of the story and then go over the second part in a different issue. So this is the story. Uh, let's see, how much of this should I actually get rid of? Let me, let me get rid of a bunch of this just to get it down to a thousand. Okay, so I got it down to a thousand words. It says, once upon a time in the land of Etheria, a group of adventurers gathered in a small village of Oakvale. The village elders spoke of a mysterious cave hidden deep within the enchanted forest. Legends whispered of the cave's magical powers capable of granting unimaginable wishes to those who dared to enter. Emma, a brave and determined warrior, led the group. She was joined by James, a skilled archer, Sophia, a wise sorceress, Michael, a strong and an agile rogue, Oliver, a gifted healer, and William, a knowledgeable scholar. Together, they set off on their perilous quest. As the adventurers ventured deeper into the enchanted forest, they encountered fantastical creatures and over overcame treacherous obstacles. They fought off a pack of enchanted wolves, solved riddles to unlock hidden paths, and traverse a treacherous rope bridge suspended over a bottomless chasm. So this is going to be the first part of the story. If we click on next, it will go into the actual characters of the comic. And that's where this software really does shine. All right, so it takes a little while to get to this point because it's actually generating the characters. So it will start off by automatically creating some characters for you um, once you get to this step, but you can of course edit the characters however you like. So you can see the way it works is it in the first step during the story, it creates the name of the character and then it will generate um, the character based off of the description over here. So you can see one female warrior named Emma, fair skin, uh, fair skin color, short haircut, brown hair, blue eyes with a golden crown, in head wearing black armor, wearing brown leather pants, holding slash carrying silver necklace. So this is the generation. If I wanted to regenerate, I would hit that and it would take three credits. And these are the characters that are going to appear in the story and they will be uh, consistent throughout the story. Now, William, I might regenerate William a little bit uh, just so you can see what it looks like. So here we have one male scholar named William, pale skin color, bald haircut, blue eyes with round glasses in head, uh, in head should be on head probably, wearing brown tweed jacket, wearing a gray trousers, holding slash carrying leather satchel. So now what I'll do is I'll give, um, actually I'll, I'll leave his hair. I won't change anything. I'll just click regenerate so we can see what it does to create the new William. And here is the new William. You can see there is a history here. So it 
didn't change much, uh, but that's of course I didn't change the prompt at all. So it would make sense that he would still look the same. But obviously if I wanted to add like some hair or something like that, I can easily change it. Let's uh, regenerate one more time so we can see a new image. And there's a new image of William, just slightly different, but everything is pretty much the same because the prompt is the same. So if you want to add new characters, you can click up here to add a new character. You give the character a name. Um, you would of course choose a uh, description and all those good things. I am not going to add any new characters. Just delete that. And we are going to continue on with creating the actual panels. All right, and here we are on the panel screen. This is where you create the actual panels. So you can click over here to create new panel. You can click on that in order to actually hide the panels. You can do the same thing over here. And these are the different characters in our story. And what you're going to do is you're just going to use the description to actually generate an image. First, you click on a character and or um, multiple characters. And the, this is what's going to be in the actual panel. You can upload um, action references. This is just like the actual pose that the character is gonna be in, and they do have different presets. So I'll select that as a preset. You would, of course, create in the description what the character is actually doing in this particular panel, and then click on generate. Oh, they do have also, you can change the camera angle and you can change the weather of the scene. Let's click on generate to see what it does with Emma. And here is the first generation. And so we have Emma, um, the Emma character. You can see it does keep consistency a little bit with the actual image of what it looks like. And her position is the exact same position that I chose here. I can, of course, change this prompt any way I like. Right now, it just says Emma leading the group towards the Enchanted Forest. The termination, the map of the Enchanted Forest, and the same village of Oak Vale. So I'm going to change the camera to change it to wide. Make it a sunny, sunny day. And I'm going to regenerate. And here is the new generation. Um, I did space out some of the stuff in the prompt just to make it easier for me to see the individual words. But as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, just of course, with it being sunny and a different little bit of a different shot. So I'm going to play with this prompt a little bit just so I can get something that actually looks like her um, walking towards a village. All right, so here is the third generation. I did change things a little bit. Um, I got rid of some of the prompt just to focus on the actual village. So you can do, you, now you can actually see that Emma is in a forest and she does have some people behind her. So jumping into the second panel, you can see it says James aiming his bow and arrow at the enchanted wolves. Alert bow and arrow inside the enchanted forest. So I don't think they have anything that would look like aiming a bow and arrow as far as the action poses. So I'm going to leave that alone and just click on generate. All right, so I'm done with the second panel. I uh, changed the prompt a little bit. Once again, just focusing on the actual action. I did have to go through a few generations before I could find something where it looks like he is actually holding and aiming the bow and arrow. There's a few where he looks like he's holding it, but this was the only one where he's actually aiming at something. So as you can see, it does keep the exact same character with each generation. Of course, you do have to play with it to get it to look exactly like you want. And if you are a pro member, you can just upload the poses, which will make it a lot easier. But I just did not use any presets just so I can get the action. And so I'm going to go through all the different panels and create one for each character and then move on to the next step. All right, so all the panels are done. I just basically created uh, one panel for each character. And I did create um, one panel of Emma, once again, going over the rope bridge. 
And so basically what it does is it just creates a scene with all of the uh, all the points in the story that you added beforehand and you can do it uh, a little bit better where you have like you know two two panels with one character two or three panels with the other character so on and so on as far as I can tell it doesn't look like you can have multiple characters in one panel it's probably something that they're going to add later on I'm sure but for now, these are all the panels and all the characters. The important thing is, of course, the consistency of the characters. You can see that they all keep the same outfits, which is great. And now we will move on to the next step. And of course, as you can probably guess, the next step is actually putting the panels on the page. If we look over here, we have our panels, text, templates, and bubbles, speech bubbles. So first off, you can, of course, just use individual frames for the panels, or you can actually use a full grid. I will use one of these just for the sake of time. And you would take your actual panels and just move them into these grids. So I'm going to double click on that first image, move it down a little bit. So you can see that goes right in there. Take this next image, just move it into this panel over here. This image, just drop it in there. And then so on and so on until actually, let me double click on that, move it up. And drop it in the other one. Actually, you know what, let me just delete that. Drop it in there. And Let's move the image over so you can see his face. Take our cleric, put her there. And then we got our scholar over here. Let's move that a little bit. And then that's how you would actually put everything into the various positions. If you want to add text, you would just go over here actually you would want to create bubble first so if we were to take this bubble bring it over you can change the position like you can do it like that or you can do it like that however you want to do it let's go with a different bubble um go with this one and then once you have the bubble, that's when you would go to the actual text and you would just add text. Now you could input basically anything you want. Um, something like, I hate, uh, let's see, what does she hate? She hates snakes. Something like, I hate snakes. Type that in there. And of course, all of the actual, um, all the actual options for the text are up at the top. So she yells, I hate snakes because she sees a snake. And then there you go. That's it right there. You could change the color, make it like red or something like that. Change the size, make it bigger. We change the size of the actual bubble. Oh, and she yells, I hate snakes. It's probably not a good font to use. But you get the picture. You get the idea. And then you just basically keep doing that. Keep adding your bubbles. All right. So I just added um, a few more bubbles just to show you guys how it works. Now, for some reason, when you are typing the text, um, it does not seem to recognize the space bar, which is kind of weird when you're first typing it, but after you're done typing it, you can just go back and uh, put spaces between the words. So I'm sure that's probably something they're working on. But once you are done with your page, you can just click on new page to create a new page. Of course, you will need to create some more panels for the new page. Like I do have, um, I do still have some more panels that I can use and you can create 
you can choose from the different stories. So when you create more than one story, they will be listed here. And then of course you will get the panels for each story. So that is uh, pretty much how it works. It's pretty easy to use. There is still some things they need to work on before you can, um, I guess, make like professional grade comic books with it. But the most important thing is, of course, the consistency of the characters. That is something that's really hard to do with um, a lot of these AI generators. And so something that can create consistent characters in different positions is definitely worth checking out. If we end this, um, actually, I'm going to download this so I can use it as a thumbnail. And then we will jump over to the actual memberships. So you can see the different plans. You get the, the starter is what I have now, 12,200 uh, 12, credits is what you get for starting out. And then remember you get the 99 a day. You can export animated comic and one click to comic. You can do all of that good stuff. The pro gives you 4,500 credits and refills every month. You can export the animated comic, one click comic, Customize action reference image, remove watermark, more upcoming exciting features. So they're still working on it. There's still some new things coming in. And that is $15 a month. You can just go ahead and buy credits. And of course, they have my history of all the credits that I've used. So if you are looking for something that can uh, make it a little bit easier to create conks and of course if you want the feature where you can upload your own positions which is probably the best way to use this so you're not regenerating over and over again then I can definitely recommend that $15 a month it's pretty cheap to be able to use something like this other than that it is just a great tool for consistent characters so that is uh, pretty much it for this video uh, let me know what you guys think if you want me to upgrade just so you can see what the um, what these different functions are, let me know. I have no problem doing that. And thank you so much for watching as always. And I will catch you guys in the next video.